Good morning, everybody. Oh, such a lot of you. I hope you all had a good time at the conference so, so far and an enjoyable little mid-morning break. Um, there are more people coming. My friend Ben is about to join us. Um, you are all muted as a matter of course and your videos are off as you enter. Um, this session is going to be recorded just like all the other sessions at the conference. But unlike the other sessions you have attended so far, this isn't a webinar, this is a normal Zoom session. So feel free to turn on your screens if you want to show your faces with the knowledge that it is being recorded and we can see your faces. Uh, my name is Gun. I am Scotland Coordinator for City of Sanctuary and I will be chairing this session this morning. And I'm very happy to have two wonderful contributors this morning. Inga from the Edinburgh Global Team at the University of Edinburgh, who will give you a longer bio of herself. And Rhoda, who is a scholarship student at the University of Den Monfort and a member of the Universities of Sanctuary Steering Group. So very happy that this morning we have both a practitioner who has organised Refugee Week events for her university and a student voice with Rhoda. Uh, so we will have a rounded picture, I hope, and have a good conversation. Um, I would like to remind you also, as have my colleagues this morning, that we will all observe good Zoom etiquette. We will not interrupt each other. And there will be time to answer some questions, ask some questions, and have a conversation at points in the session this morning and also at the end, I hope. We have a slightly smaller, uh, shorter session. It's 45 minutes we will have together. Um, and if you want to catch my attention to ask a question, please put it in the chat line. If you want to speak, you can put your virtual hand up and we will get going if everybody's in. So a wonderful number of 37 people and counting. So that's great. Uh, so this session this morning, as you all know, is about universities engaging with Refugee Week, a how-to guide. This is what we aim to do. So first of all, before I give the virtual microphone over to Inga, could I ask, has anybody here attended Refugee Week or Refugee Festival Scotland? events or even organized one. If you have done so, please put it in the chat function. Um, and let's see if we can get the conversation started and whether Inga here has any colleagues who have done similar work to her. Felicity from Scottish Guardianship Services. Yes, Felicity, did you organize the session or did you attend the session? Hold on, I will unmute you. Attend. I didn't organise. <laughs> ah, never too late to start, Felicity. So hopefully we will hear from you. I'm sure. I'm yeah. Oh, University of Exeter, Abigail, you were involved in organising sessions or did you attend sessions? Uh, I did both. I attended in my early years and then by the time I left, I was organising. Were you organising the whole thing or were you organising? No, just some events on campus. Excellent. Anyone else with the experience of Refugee Week or Refugee Festival Scotland? Okay, so a few of us have attended them, but hopefully many interested parties were hoping to find out how to get started. So on that note, I think, Inga, I will give the microphone over to you. And why don't you tell us about your Refugee Week journey with the University of Edinburgh? And introduce thank yourself, you of course. Oh, thank you very much, Gun. <laughs> um, my name is Inga, and I work in the University of Edinburgh in Edinburgh Global. That's the international office of the university. And I joined Edinburgh Global about two and a half years ago. And it was a year after the university achieved the University of Sanctuary status. We did not celebrate Refugee Week when I joined the office. And to be honest, I don't think we really we really knew much about Refugee Week or Refugee Festival Scotland, and it was not part of our University of Sanctuary application. So in this presentation, 
I will share how we started, how we set it up and with very limited resources and staff um, and succeeded in making it a fixed date in our events calendar. So if you could put the first slide, please. Um, thank you very much. So okay. first of all, I will do that. Sometimes uh -huh. it takes a couple of minutes for my no machine problem. to do that. So keep so talking and slides what, what is, here. you know, what is uh, Refugee Week? So Refugee Week is a UK wide festival celebrating the contributions and creativity and resilience of refugees. And it aims to help facilitate greater understanding of why people seek sanctuary and help create a better understanding between different communities. It was founded in 1998. It lasts one, so one week of events, and they're usually around World Refugee Day, which is the 20th of June. So all festivities take place in June, and next year the festival is taking place uh, from the 14th to 20th of June. It's coordinated by Counterparts Arts. It's a, a leading national organization in the field of arts and migration and social change, and they're based in London. Um, so every week has a certain theme, and in 2020, the theme was Imagine. At the same time, there's also a Refugee Festival Scotland, and we universities in Scotland uh, are encouraged to participate in the Refugee Festival Scotland. It's a Scotland-wide festival, which was founded in 2000, so it's been 20 years, and um, it was called a Refugee Week Scotland, but it was renamed to Refugee Festival in 2014 to encompass the increasing uh, greater number of events taking place in Scotland. And um, Refugee Festival Scotland is coordinated by Scottish Refugee Council. They have their headquarters in Glasgow and it lasts two weeks also in June and around World Refugee Day. So um, next year, it's going to be 15th to 24th of June, 2021. Um, this Scotland-wide program of cultural and arts, uh, sports events brings refugee and local communities across Scotland together um, and celebrates the contribution that refugees make to Scotland. But it's not only a festival, that's, only, that's also a campaign for a fair and just asylum system. So different dates, both festivals around World Refugee Day, but still, you know, one week, two weeks, different things, quite close, but, you know, still different things. Which one to choose? So for us, um, the decision was simple. We'll just do both. Why choose one if we can do both? So we decided that we will be holding a series of events in support of national and regional activities celebrating refugees throughout June. And we call it Refugee Week. We choose a Refugee Week's branding, the logo. But when we announce our events, we usually speak about, you know, Scottish Refugee Festival and Refugee Week. Um, when I speak about Refugee Week in, in, in my talk, I will be referring to both because, you know, we are in Scotland, so our ev events fall into the program of Refugee Week and fall into the program for the Refugee Festival Scotland. And we just say it's in June and, and pick the dates of 14th, 24th of June to, to cover both festivals. So how did we get started? Uh, it was quite simple. Our journey started with a Facebook page. Shortly after I started working in Edinburgh Global, my colleague, Sarah Hoy, and I uh, were the members of the global community team, newly established, and we wanted to mark World Refugee Day. So we had absolutely no time to organize any events, and we had no resources, and I think it was about two weeks uh, before the World Refugee Day. But I was managing a Facebook page for international student support at the time at the university. And for me, the solution was simple. I'll just, I'll just post something on the day on Facebook. That's how we'll mark the day. So when I was looking for content for a Facebook page, I've discovered um, a lot of materials on Refugee Week's webpage. And uh, one of exciting campaigns that I thought we can do would be the simple acts of kindness. Gun, can you please uh, put the next slide? So the simple, simple acts of kindness is um, a campaign, a social media campaign run by Refugee Week. And these are uh, 
just everyday actions that anyone can do uh, to stand with refugees and show their support. And those acts include something like read a book about exile, share a message of welcome, watch a film. Um, more information about simple acts you, you will find on the webpage. I have put the link on the slide and also put the link uh, to the events organizers pack, which is quite helpful, but I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later. But these, these are the acts, uh, the simple acts. I really liked it and I thought that's what we're going to do. So let's uh, pick an act every day of the week. We have seven days until the World Refugee Day. So let's post one um, message each day. So we've approached our colleagues in Eisenberg Global and explained what we want to do. And uh, people were quite happy to participate and to share a simple act of kindness from across the office. Good, could you put the next slide, please? So in our first year in 2018, our Refugee Week campaign was just seven posts on Facebook for international student support. Um, and, and here are some of the examples. The first post was just explaining what we're going to do. And this is a photo of Sarah, who was in an Erasmus staff exchange in the Netherlands. And they were um, discussing, collaborating on refugee issues. So that's how it started. Um, on the third post, it's me and my colleague Kalina. And we are sharing a simple act of kindness, which was learn a few words in another language. And because we speak several languages, we put all our languages together that we know across the office and, you know, put a little handmade poster and just a photo of ourselves um, and also a cake. You know, our office baker made a cake and that is also one of acts of kindness. Bake a cake, share it with your friends, share it with, with people. And we thought, well, if there is one thing that has power to unite the world, then that's probably cake. So it was a lovely campaign. Our colleagues liked it very much, but we thought, well, we really should and we can do more as a university. We should engage with Refugee Week. And um, in Edinburgh Global, we run different themed events, cultural themed weeks. So different regional teams are responsible for different weeks like Africa Week, South Asia Week, South America Week. So we in Global Community proposed to run Refugee Week next year. And I volunteered to coordinate it. And uh, with the support from the director of Edinburgh Global, we included it into our annual calendar of events in 2019. What it means is the promise, the social contract, as you wish. Uh, including this in the calendar of events just ensured that we will get support from our local communications team and like any other themed events, they will support us and we would need to uh, put a feature article about the week and they will give us a dedicated web page uh, where we could have a program of events and they will also help us you know, promote it uh, across different uh, university social media channels and units. So that was just a promise, but it was the first step. And, you know, of course, it, it's not my major work. It's just one of the projects. So I was, I was busy with, with, with different activities, different projects. But um, thinking about, well, you know, Refugee Week a year from now, what is it I'm going to do? What if I won't find any events? What, what, you know, what if no one is interested? I thought, well, at least we can do simple acts of kindness. And you know how they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I thought, well, you know, simple acts of kindness. We can do this. We can do the social campaign. And it sort of gave me the base that I needed to kind of like breathe in, breathe out and say, well, simple acts, that's happening. And then I thought, okay, so um, what events can we do? And I would recommend you to go on Refugee Week and Refugee Festival Scotland web pages and look through programs. Uh, both websites contain um, archive of uh, former programs and, and you can see um, and look for inspirations uh, of what you could do. So it was quite helpful, helpful in terms of getting ideas and also getting ideas for collaborations, because you can see who in your area or maybe even in your university participated in Refugee Week events in the past. And I was 
surprised to find out that actually one of research units and uh, one of professors participated in Refugee Week. I just didn't know anything about it. So what I did, I've contacted uh, those two um, speakers who participated in the past, asking them, look, uh, I, I will help you. We'll put it on a different level. We want to celebrate it as the university. Will you be participating again next year? Um, and it turned out that they actually knew about Refugee Festival Scotland more than me, and they've already submitted the ideas, and they were already in the program. It was it was their program and their departments. So that's that's a win. So I would encourage you to look through the programs for inspirations, for collaborative ideas, and also for former events, and just approach those those researchers who've participated in the past. Um, if we speak about challenges, uh, one of the challenges is that these events usually get confirmed quite late, end of May. Well, end of May, and the festival is in June, um, so you quite often would not know if someone will put an event together or not. And our communications team, because they were keen on promoting it on the central level, uh, were, were really uh, encouraged me to submit events as soon as possible. But because I was not the organizer, but a coordinator, I didn't know whether, you know, whether there will be more events or less events. So that, that was quite a challenge when, when it's not you who are coordinating, but, but you who are, uh, it's not you who are putting the events together, but you who are coordinating. But I think that's, you know, that's the nature of the role. So um, I've also reached out to student groups, uh, but I've learned quite quickly that June is not the best time for student events, but the festival is in June, so I can't change it. Uh, student engagement is quite low in June uh, due to uh, students leaving campus completely in June. So University of Edinburgh undergraduate students leave their accommodation, they're not there, and postgraduate students are busy working on their dissertations. And this is a challenge. So students put together a lot of events uh, throughout the year, but none of them were interested to do something in the middle or, you know, tw end of June. So it was quite clear that we won't have any student events. It was um, disappointing, but, but you know, uh, a surprise, a challenge, but what can you do? Uh, so traditionally, um, also traditionally, the majority of refugee community events and research network events take place in Glasgow. And that was another challenge for me, but I guess it was more of a mental challenge. I thought, oof, Everything is taking place in Glasgow. The Scottish Refugee Council headquarters are there. Gramnet, Glasgow Refugee and Asylum Immigration Network is in Glasgow. Nothing is happening in Edinburgh. I, I won't be able to find any events. It's a mistake. Of course, a lot of things are happening in Edinburgh, but you might experience the same thing thinking that, oh, everything is happening in Manchester or London, nothing is happening in my in my city. I, I won't be able to get any uh, community engagement. That that's not, that's not true. Um, look for inspiration from uh, colleagues in the university, and that's what I did. So we've kind of announced that that's what we'll be doing. The Refugee Week is part of the part of the calendar of events, and we encourage colleagues to share their ideas. And I think we even put the uh, board in our office and everyone who walked, it, uh, walked into Global Community Office uh, had an opportunity to, to leave to brainstorm an idea for Refugee Week. And um, I don't know if my colleague Sheila Mills is listening right now, but, but Sheila once forwarded an email to me about uh, a festival that New York uh, State Library was putting together, Books Without Borders. And it just, you know, it inspired me. So I talked to our university library and, and spoke to them about the festival in New York, spoke to them about the Refugee Week, and they got quite excited and uh, decided to put together an exhibition of, of books uh, that could relate to Refugee Week and Refugee Festival Scotland, and also put together a reading list of books uh, from authors from the University of Edinburgh, different researchers that, that wrote about uh, this. And they were actually very excited to put this together. They really enjoyed this project. And that was another event. So by the end of second year, 
Can, can you put the next slide, please? We already had five events. So it was the library that was contributing, uh, Bilingualism Matters and Syrian Futures put an event together. Uh, Syrian Futures put a Syrian Culture Night together. And of course, I had my simple acts, uh, something that, you know, um, is, is there. Um, and we also had a, a film night, a film viewing, uh, coordinated by CARA and the Global um, Agriculture and Food Security. Um, so five events, that's, that's already something. And uh, of course, we had a feature article. You will, I, I just put the screenshot of the feature article to show you that it's actually not that much as you can see, right? And, and the events, uh, the, the website just had three events, but there were five. And then we would refer to the overall refugee week. But one of the little successes for me was that the University of Edinburgh, the central Facebook channel and central social media channels picked up on this and featured refugee week. That was a little success. In terms of budget, we really did not spend anything that second year because library was happy to do their events did not require require any funding the film viewing uh was was free and uh the department uh covered uh the drinks reception so the professor that was uh, leading on the panel discussion and this event with the film viewing her budget covered the drinks reception um uh, different units like Syrian Futures also had the departmental budget that, that covered part of the uh, Syrian language and culture night. It was just a matter of uh, talking to the department to say, hey, you can, you can run your event in May, but won't, why don't you do it in June? Because you involve the local community. So, and that falls into the refugee week. So you know, you can talk to, to, to people and, and their budgets can cover events during Refugee Week. But another thing that uh, we have in Scotland is the community small grants of the New Scots Integration Programme. Um, they, they cover up to £500. Um, and uh, in 2019, they cover 20, uh, 37 awards uh, were granted to events uh, during Refugee Week, and they covered an event run by our Bilingualism Matters and Syrian Futures event. So usually in the information about those uh, community small grants is published around uh, January, February. Uh, you can look for this information on social media pages or the website, um, and, and the deadline for publication is around that time. So this is something that we have in Scotland, but I'm sure you have something like this in, in the areas where, where your university is. It's just, you know, just, just, just look for some funding uh, early enough. Um, we also, I also applied for postcards and campaign posters from the Refugee Week and Scottish Refugee Council, and they were sent to us free of charge. So that, that was great. And internally, we had a big sale in our department and um, on the World Refugee Day, which, you know, something that universities like to do very much, bake sales, and the money went to Scottish Refugee Council afterwards. In our third year, for our third year, I already decided, you know, we can allocate funds. The Refugee Week was more or less established, and uh, we had a, you know, go from the director to allocate some funds from the global community budget to refugee week and i intended to have a speaker so speaker fee um, i've approached student societies and phd students uh, were keen to hold a film viewing and i put uh, put aside travel costs for african filmmakers to come to scotland show their films um, i spoke not only to the library but to our museums um, and we have museums of musical instruments and they were keen to have a musician's playing, so a musician's fee. And um, I spoke to our gallery, university gallery, and they were keen to put an exhibition together, had some ideas and we had an artist fee. So it was all well planned. I started planning in January. Uh, I also made a call at the university to ask different colleagues to participate. And there was a lot of interest. And I also spoke to students. Um, um, it was clear that, you know, students will not be able to do anything in June, but um, I started following student activities and, you know, just going to student festivals and events. STAR was fantastic. Um, 
Amnesty International was incredible. And those two groups put a refugee festival together. So Amnesty International was leading on organization. And in February, we had, we had a refugee festival run uh, by students for uh, everyone, uh, which also involved a lot of community groups. It was incredible. I was ready to go with the refugee week. And then, you know, what happened in March. So again, can you please put slide, uh, the next slide, please? So COVID happened. I was not clear. What is it we're going to do? The Refugee Festival Scotland um, announced quite quickly that they cancel the Refugee Festival Scotland that year. Um, but the Refugee Week said, no, we're going ahead. We'll have virtual Refugee Week. So it was quite clear to me if Refugee Week is happening, then you know, University of Edinburgh Refugee Week is going ahead as well. But unfortunately, because of travel restrictions, right, African filmmakers couldn't make it. Um, it was it was almost impossible to get to get a speaker, um, and, and I had to make a lot of changes to the program. And you know, one by one, exhibitions uh, were, were not sure whether they will be able to to do anything digitally, uh, and uh, the museum's collection um, was not you know, uh, interested in looking for a musician on such a short notice. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it was, so it was the time when, it, when we were not yet very experienced in, in Zoom and, and collaborate and all those platforms. And we're not quite experienced in, in streaming live music events. So it was, it was quite a challenging time. And on top of that, you know, all the other priorities and, and students and safety and lockdown, so I thought, well, the simple acts of kindness, that's always with me. At least we can do the simple acts of kindness. And um, so what happened was uh, I collaborated with our communications team and it was clear that we will have the simple acts of kindness. There will be, a, you know, they will have a even more important role. That was a social media campaign. Um, then the feature article, of course, nothing stops us from putting a feature article for the Refugee Week together. Um, some events were still taking place. Uh, it was just, you know, time for, for uh, different university units to, co to commit and confirm whether they will be going ahead. But, you know, they've learned more. And um, as we went along uh, and uh, at the end, we had more events than in 2019, so six events. Uh, there was a panel discussion, um, uh, there was a talk. Uh, so, you know, the, the usual events that we now uh, know how to hold very well. But the gem of uh, the Refugee Week 2020 for, for me and, and for us was uh, the storybook. As I was uh, visiting and, and um, getting involved in student events throughout the year, I asked students to submit their stories of what they do, of their projects, um, of their personal experience and uh, to me. And together with the communications team, we'll put together those stories into a storybook of examples of what University of Edinburgh is doing, our community, our student community. Um, and it turned into a storybook with, with pictures and true stories. The, the text was not edited much, so the stories are as sc sanctuary scholars and students who participate in Amnesty International and STAR, uh, Palestinian societies and all the other wonderful um, uh, societies and clubs uh, told by students. And also a couple of researchers submitted their stories for the storybook and um, it, it, it was published together with during Refugee Week. So um, I think I have to finish quite quickly. <laughs> but the important thing is that even in 2020, when we went virtual, we managed to have more events than in 2019. And uh, everyone who participated in 2019 participated in 2020 and plus more. We've collected asylum uh, seeker scholarship testimonies and raised the profile uh, across the university and increased, increased student engagement through the storybook. 
Um, and suddenly strengthened relationship with the Scottish Refugee Council and Refugee Week and community groups, just because, you know, I was, I was um, pushed to uh, reach out to, to different organizations to ask for advice and help, which I don't know if I would have done. Of course, it's best practice, but I was forced to do it, so I did it. And I guess Refugee Week events can come in any shapes and uh, sizes. Um, and um, again, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Refugee Week, step by step, bite by bite. The uh, lessons learned for me and opportunities maybe, you know, for you, if you want to start Refugee Week in your university is um, not to reinvent the, ve uh, the wheel. Um, look for the events organizer pack uh, from the Refugee Week website. Um, they have quite clear steps and checklists and uh, help with social media. Look into uh, simple acts of kindness. Maybe it will work for you as well. Explore collaborative opportunities, maybe with other universities of sanctuary. If you are not sure whether you can do an event on your own, do it with someone else. Maybe there is, it's worth exploring something with international partners. Of course, approaching the university academic stuff. They probably already do research in migration issues and would be happy to talk about their research with the public. And certainly, um, you know, collaborate with, with the city of sanctuary because uh, they would know what's going on in the city and, and you can maybe provide space and venues for community groups to run Refugee Week events at the university. But, you know, you, you will be participating. Uh, you, you, you will be uh, providing support and thus you will be participating in the Refugee Week. You know, and, and also, you know, it's worth exploring opportunities to invite sanctuary scholars, alumni and student groups. And I think Rhoda um, will be speaking about involving sanctuary scholars in Refugee Week. Off to you, Rhoda. Thank you so much, Inga, for that wonderful talk. I think your enthusiasm. <laughs> absolutely comes through. You are being very modest about the amazing amount of effort you've put into this over the last three years, but I think we can see it. And I like the realism of it as well, that you know you do show how you can do with very little budget, but with a lot of passion and enthusiasm, energy and commitment. Thank you. So thank you for that. And as you said, Rhoda, it's over to you. I will unmute you and I will bring your slide up just now. And then everybody, we will just have an open Q&A afterwards. It is, our time is coming to an end, but it is lunch break afterwards. So if people want to have lunch and ask questions, I'm sure we can impose on Inga and Rhoda and baby TJ to stay on, <laughs> stay online with us a little bit more. Thank you. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, so, um, as Inga said, like there are, there are lots of stuff, lots of information and resources on the refugee website, um, refugee week website that we can look into and like try to incorporate. Week, um, but also some of the things that you can do at your, you such as organize seminar. So um, you know this is, I know that obviously at the moment because of the old situation, it's it might, it's quite difficult to organize seminar, but also. That's why we have platforms such as this. Um, so, you know, Microsoft Teams, Zoom and stuff like that. We can use that to organize like a seminar where we talk about Refugee Week and um, um, sanctuary scholars who, who, um, who would like to share the story and explain difficulties, um, people with refugee and people who are refugee, what they face and stuff like that, you know, and this can be organized also um also another thing which another thing that i find very helpful is that because at my uni a lot of um okay so i i went to the article 26 um conference i think that would be three years ago now and a lot of things that that resonated with me one of the things that resonated with me was that a lot of people when they went to uni, they didn't, they went to, you know, the normal finance, you know, when you, when they go to uni and they say, oh, um, you've not paid your school fees or something. And they thinking, oh, okay, I'm on, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scholar. 
So um, how do I do that? How do I pay my school fees considering I'm on, I'm on scholarship and stuff like that? Um, one thing that they say is that when they go to the finance thing, the finance thing do not even know anything about what uh, Article 26 student is. Sorry. Yeah, they don't know what, what an Article 26 student is or um, what um, Santori Scholar is. They have no clue. And, um, and sometimes when you don't even have like a contact to, to discuss with about your scholarship, it can be very difficult. And I think that one of the things that we can do also is that um, organize a group of staff um, who are less busy or who can create time to learn about what students who are on scholarship, especially sanctuary scholarship phase, and um, also what what the scholarship is about. And if there are students who come to them as, um, you know, as, um, you know, having difficulty, having a problem, how they can, where they can tell them to go, what they can tell them to do, and what they can do to alleviate the stress at the time. Because the, the, the saddest thing that could happen is that you go to the department, the finance department, you say, you know, um, maybe you just received the letter from the home office saying that, um, you know, you don't, you know, your your claim is being refused. And then you panicking, going to the finance team saying that, um, what are you meant to do? And everyone is like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Giga, and that can be very daunting and even more stressful for the person going through it, not stress as it is. And then they try to navigate and find where, where to, get solution and what was going to happen to them and they don't know what's going to happen to the scholarship and so find um making sure that there are some some member of staff in the uni and especially the ones in the forefront making sure that they know what sanctuary scholars are and um, and what they can do to help them and the contacts they can give to them as well so that's one um another thing that we can also do is um is to also like we can talk to um and i think that um usually usually is the teacher <laughs> sorry usually is the teachers that do this <laughs> sorry simply for just having big defeat um so usually it's the students that do this like if i have like say for instance some of the students um the sanctuary scholars is from a, um those drama now you could what you could do is this course with them if they could organize themselves organize some of their colleagues or their course mates if they could do a small drama about refugee about being a refugee to to kind of enlighten people to kind of create that emotion that drama does to people to create that emotion and say you know what um this is what people are going through and i find that i find that a lot of times when people do drama, it kind of connects with people and make them feel feel some emotions that they don't even seem to realize that they, they, they can feel. And also singing as well. Um, I don't know, in our unis, there was, there was a time that people just came to the middle of the campus and they started singing. And funny enough, everyone joined them as well. Everyone that was going past, they were all singing with them and were stood there like, and that is something that is spontaneous that we can do as well. But obviously, in this during this virtual during this pandemic, it's a bit more difficult to do that. So I suggest that also what we can do is that send videos to people. Sorry, send videos to people and videos of um that's relating to refugee week and send it to people as well. Um so thank you. Yeah, that's all that's some of the things that I can I can um suggest to do. Thank you. Over to good. Thank you very much, Rhoda and Baby. <laughs> I have to say it's wonderful to have a baby at um, an online meeting. I hope once this COVID situation is behind us, we never go back to excluding babies from our meetings. It would be a terrible loss. Um, thank you very much, Rhoda. I think it's wonderful, as we have seen so far in this conference and the sessions, that it makes such a difference to have a student voice involved in our events and our planning and 
I love the idea of using Refugee Week, not just as a celebration, or as information giving externally, but as an opportunity to raise awareness within the institution, to connect the dots of colleagues who are interested in Refugee Week, as uh, Inga mentioned earlier, that you know there were colleagues already involved in Refugee Week, but they weren't in touch with one another. And if in City of Sanctuary we believe in, in anything, we believe that networks have power and university networks also have power. And I absolutely love Rhoda's idea of using Refugee Week to inform and influence internally within the professional bodies of our universities. So thank you very much, Rhoda and Inga both for uh, your contributions. And thank you very much for everyone for your comments on the chat line. I'm trying to keep up with them. And we were all distracted by the lovely giggling baby for a moment early, I think, and stopped reading. Um, the, I will stop sharing the slides now, and the floor is now open for conversation. There's quite a lot of us, so if you would like to say anything, raise your virtual hand or just wave at me. I will try and see your face, and I will unmute you, and we have a we can have a conversation. Um, but as a conversation started, I wondered, um, is anyone? You're hoping to organise an event for their university in 2021 coming up. Does anyone like to talk about their plans at all? Oh, I can see Madeline there. Um, so Madeline, I think you are unmuted. So why don't you tell us what your plans and your ideas are? Well, um, we were planning to actually bring um, Refugee Week, the national dates, actually into um, April. We tried to do that this year, but obviously it was really bad timing. We had no idea what was going to happen. And at that point in April, we just didn't have, we just weren't together in terms of online um, activities. So this year, looking to plan it for either February or April. Um, and I just want some sort of thoughts about whether you think it's sensible to pull out the, the week and try to do it when the students are actually here. What we wanted to say was that it was like a warm up. To refugee week when I spoke to some of the local NGOs they liked that idea but I also wasn't sure if it kind of sat right that we did pull it out of the national week and whether it kind of felt quite disconnected in some ways or what your thoughts were on that. In, Inga I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yes so um, I think I think nothing stops you for trying out um because I, I know it's very challenging to get student involvement in june it's almost impossible but uh because students were running events and running their refugee festival throughout the year and i know many universities do this just because that's the time everyone is on campus you can use this event during refugee week as a recording or as a story, or as, as, as something as a reference point, or maybe you make some connections and, and can use it. Maybe you won't put the same festival together, but maybe you, know, you can use that story or story of sanctuary seekers. So I, I don't think um, anything should stop you from doing it. Of course, it's not running in June, but you know it's possible to use to use this uh, outcomes for for June for publicity. Well, I don't know what you what you would want to do in June. So I, I understand it's a it's a it's a decision to make. Um, and um, but I, I think you should try it. If people are on board, if the community groups are happy to do it, just do it. Maybe you know if you do it in January and February by June, they would want to do it again. That's if brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Inga. And I, I would second that as well. I think any engagement is good engagement. I do think it's important to mark 20th of June World Refugee Day, but you know, that can be done with, with, with comms or maybe an isolated event. But I think universities, students and sanctuary scholarships, scholars as well are integral to universities' engagement with refugee matters. So why not involve? If you have when you have the option to do so. So thank you very much for that, Madla. Anyone else with any questions for Rhoda or Inga? Okay. 
Um, I'm sorry, I actually have a suggestion, if that's okay. Um, I wanted to say that um, also there are some universities that can, um, that can, I suppose, that do not have the option of um, sanctuary scholars on their um, application, um, their application, their online application. And I think that it's um, because there are some universities that, um, or some educational institution that do, um, that does sanctuary scholarship, but when you fill in the form in, the options are just, um, are you self-funded? Are you funded by an organization or are you funded by um, your parents? And I think that it might be also worth looking into maybe um, as part of the refugee campaigning for such an option as part of an inclusion into the system of the universities as well. Thank you very much for that, Rhoda. Um, I've just put uh, some links about Refugee Week onto the chat line. I will do a similar uh, thing for Refugee Week, Refugee Festival Scotland in a moment as well. Um, would anyone like to comment on um, what, what do you feel you would need to get you started on Refugee Week journey? Is there, is there one thing that would help one bit of information or anything? that City of Sanctuary uh, organisation or Inga and Rhoda can support you with. Feel free to tell us. You might have hit that pre-lunch uh, slump yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay, I, what I, I will do... I think it's quite important just to, you know, like the, the first step, um, who will coordinate it? You know, someone, someone who will just uh, start the conversation. Uh, and, and, you know, if someone is so, sort of pushing it forward, that's already great help. If you can uh, identify this person, whether they are in the international office or in student welfare or in the student association, quite often it's a student association, or maybe a researcher who wants to do it. You know, if just someone starts with, with you know let's do it um that you know more and more events will uh, more and more people will join so it doesn't have to be a, a program of events it could just be a collaborative event it could just be a promotion of the refugee week the national refugee week or the activities that are happening in your city that could be just you know the first step and you'll see how how the university re re reacts to this and quite often it's students who are who are um, pushing pushing this uh, refugee week activities? You know, contact you a local star group. They they would know what's going on. And I I also saw a, a comment, a very good comment from Monimul Hamid, MD Monimul Hamid about sanctuary scholars. That quite often universities engage with sanctuary scholars just for the refugee week and don't do anything. Uh, during the year with Sanctuary Scholars, and it's a very fair comment, uh, I would say. So, for example, you know, that storybook that we put together for the Refugee Week uh, this year, um, collecting stories from Sanctuary Scholars would not be possible if we wouldn't have engaged with Sanctuary Scholars throughout all, the whole time. So if you want an event with Sanctuary Scholars for your Refugee Week, you should start contacting, helping, engaging, talking to your scholars as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Manimal, for that comment. Thank you very much, Inga, and thank you, MD, for your comment as well. Um, I think I will bring the meeting to a close on that note. Thank you very much, Rhoda. Thank you, Inga. Thank you, Abigail, for organising the event and bringing us together. And I think we will finish by reiterating the comments made by MD and repeated by Inga there, that this is Refugee Week, is an opportunity to bring your refugee scholars into your community, into your network within the university to hopefully organise and host a successful Refugee Week or Refugee Festival Scotland 2021 together. So good luck everybody. I look forward to many wonderful events, I hope, and thank you very much.
Thank and you. We'll see you Thank after you. lunch, I hope. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Have a nice lunch, everyone. Bye. <laughs>